Bearded Appliance Repair here with another one for you. A uh, customer complaint on this is it will not spin the clothes out. Um, what I'm noticing is, is this basket uh, will spin um, by itself. Well, if you hold the agitator, and you'll see that. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get this agitator off uh, to inspect the hub. Because what this hub is, is it connects. There it goes. You see how I'm holding the agitator in the middle, and that basket just spins? Um, that tells you that that hub is bad. And what that hub does is it connects the basket uh, to... The shaft that goes up through the tub that connects to the transmission and the motor um, it's a little plastic piece that connects the basket and the transmission together so I'm getting in here taking off this agitator to inspect this hub and you guys will see that the splines on it are bad uh, but to get this agitator off um, you need a 7 16 socket and a really long extension because um, that's that bolt is down in there probably a good I don't know 12 13 inches something like that um, yes yeah, so it's, it's pretty deep in there um, one of the hardest parts is actually breaking that sucker free um, that's what I'm having trouble with I was trying to use my uh, crescent wrench there to um, get a little bit more leverage to actually break it free because um, all I have is a small little a quarter inch drive socket that I usually carry with me um, but <clears throat> trying to break it free here but once I break it free uh, we're gonna get this agitator off and we'll be able to inspect that hub so if you're experiencing uh, something similar where it's uh, making a weird noise during spin or um, oh <laughs> yeah this is my little trick uh, being able to break free that socket is get your foot in there to actually hold that agitator in place while you're trying uh, to break that thing free because sometimes you just need three arms and you don't have three arms so why not use a leg when you can so my foot's down there holding that agitator while I'm breaking that bolt free so uh, I believe I got it free um, so we're gonna get that thing the rest of the way out but back to what I was saying before um, <clears throat> If you've got a washer that's making a weird noise during spin and uh, it's not spinning your, your clothes out, um, it's probably this little hub assembly. And uh, I'll have, you know, the part in the description in the video below. So if you guys have this same washer here, um, which it's the same part if you have an agitator or a wash plate for those low um, water washers um, a lot of times it's, they, they use the same part for a lot of these washers so um, that gives you guys a little background um, why I'm doing this so yeah we're getting this bolt out to get this agitator off and then we're gonna check out this hub assembly I keep talking about so let's get her out This is probably gonna be one of the hardest parts on some of your guys's. Like, I get a lot of comments on how do you get this agitator off? <laughs> and it is a pain. Um, I'll give you guys some tips later in the video on that. Um, probably whenever I'm installing this thing. But I'm gonna show you guys how to get it out first and then I'll give you guys some tips on how to get that agitator out if it's sticking. So, <clears throat> there is this um, little anti-moving cotter pin thing. <laughs> I don't really know what to call it. You gotta get that off because um, that actually holds um, that cam assembly um, to the transmission on that shaft, you know, that goes in. So you gotta get that guy off and then get the six screws that hold the hub on. It's just um, Phillips head screws. So get yourself a Phillips head screwdriver and it'll take you a while. It'll probably hurt your arm a little bit. So drills are a lot easier getting those suckers out. But um, you get those six screws out and 
you'll be able to look at that hub and see if the splines are going on it. And I'll tell you, they are. But we're going to go ahead and show you guys what it looks like, what a good one looks like, what a bad one looks like. Um, just so if you guys want to tear yours down to actually check it out before you get this part. That's always what I recommend. Make sure you need this um, or know you need it. <laughs> before you get it and uh, I dropped that screw down there and I was able to fish it out um, you guys aren't gonna see that um, because I was I had to go get the part and everything and I just didn't get a good video of it and all that so um, if make sure whenever you guys get those screws out uh, you don't drop it because sometimes it can be a pain to get it out um, I believe if I remember correctly I got it out with a flathead screwdriver and uh, maybe something else similar um, you know prying it in between each of the screwdrivers and everything but anyways here's the hubs here's the bad one splines are pretty much gone it's some heavy-duty plastic um, but they do you know tear up so those splines are gone on that one here's what the splines are supposed to look like even though it's hard to tell with my light but you guys might be able to see the splines are better on the new one than they are on the old one so um, what I do before I put the new one on is I give that shaft down there a good wire brushing um, a lot of times it'll be corroded and everything and you'll want to clean that up before you get this um, on there because not all of them um, are nice and clean and fit just right just like this one so you may need to get a, a wire brush to clean it up <clears throat> so to get it back in you pretty much just put it back in its place and you can move that basket you see what I'm trying to do I'm trying to line up the holes with the spline which you don't need to do that you just need to get it on the splines of the shaft um, and you can spin the basket to actually meet up uh, with those holes but here Oh, I think we are actually going to clean this one. <laughs> I took this video uh, months ago, so forgive me on uh, <clears throat> remembering what I've actually done on this guy. Uh, I'm in here trying to find my wire brush now. Um, <clears throat> there it is. We are going to clean it. Uh, I got a new camera, too, um, where it's actually straight on above my head instead of to the side like this camera is. Um, I use a GoPro 8 now, um, but I found this footage that I haven't put online here yet, so I thought I'd get this video out for you. And I thought I'd put that flashlight in a good spot so you guys can see what I'm doing, but I'm pretty much just cleaning up all the gunk off those splines so whenever you put this hub assembly on it goes on all the way down where it's supposed to where you're not having any trouble getting that cotter pin thing back in if you guys know what the heck you would call that <laughs> put that down in the comments below <laughs> i'm terrible with uh, my nomenclature and everything i go back and forth on what i say <clears throat> things are sometimes so um I'm getting this hub on, um, got it down as far as I could by hand, and occasionally you do have to uh, beat it down the rest of the way. You do want to be careful. I have done this and broke these things before, but you, you know, kind of just want to get it down there nice and snug so that cotter pin will go back in there. Because if you do take a look at that shaft, you're not going to see it in this video, but if you take a look at that shaft, um, there is a little space where you can put that cotter pin in where it won't go down or go up so while this thing's spinning um, it won't cause any more damage or anything so that piece keeps that basket in place where it won't go up or down but um, we got it into place and we're putting these screws back on but <clears throat> um, and once you get those screws back in, you're going to get that cotter pin back in and then uh, the agitator with the 716 screw. But <clears throat> back to the agitator. If you guys are having trouble getting that thing on, uh, what I use to get those um, agitators on now, um, I bought my kids a trampoline in the summertime. 
um, and it actually came with a little hook tool. Um, all it is is it's a T-handle with uh, a hook on the end of it. And what it's used for is whenever you're putting the springs on a trampoline, it helps you pull the spring, get it in the hole, and everything, which it's pretty, you know, pretty simple design. Um, so if you guys have a trampoline and you save that little hook tool, that'll help you guys uh, try and get that thing out. I only have one of those little hook tools too. Um, I also use um, other little hook tools. Um, got them at Harbor Freight, you know, to pull up on the other end of it. Um, <clears throat> the one I did, I don't know, the most recent one, um, I put one hook tool on the other side and I lifted it up and I stuffed uh, a screwdriver in there to pry it up and then I put the hook tool on the other side pulled up the other side and I used that socket with that long extension that I have and I used a hammer in the middle of it I loosened up the bolt so the agitator um, if it were to break free it would come up because um, if that bolts all the way down or if it's all the way out and you hammer it you can damage that uh, shaft in the middle of it and you don't want to do that so <clears throat> have that bolt in the middle of that agitator out maybe a good half an inch or so so whenever you put that socket and the extension on it and you have that stuff stuffed underneath it when you hit it with a hammer or you know something it'll help break it free and um, that's what I did most most recently and that's probably maybe two three weeks ago when I done that because um, these things can give you a lot of trouble getting them off but you can't give up because eventually they will come off <laughs> but anyways we got that agitator back on um, <clears throat> got the hub in uh, got the bolt on one thing you didn't see at the beginning is this little um, fabric softener put that dispenser back on and the only thing left we got to do is calibrate it you got to get in the diagnostics so I like to do a full turn and what you want to do is turn it left right 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 left right that gets you into diagnostics and the timing is important so as slow as I went you guys go you know the same speed uh, but you want to make sure that the rinse light only is illuminated I'm not sure I don't know two three four maybe four turns four or five turns um, once that rinse light is illuminated um, that's how you know it's a calibration cycle and this part actually comes with um, the directions so if you guys you know bought the part and it's OEM original um, equipment um, it should come with the instructions to actually calibrate this so hold on to that make sure you look at it and that'll tell you exactly how to calibrate it um, but calibration um, it may take about 10 minutes or so or it shouldn't take longer than 10 minutes if it takes longer than 10 minutes there may end up being a problem <laughs> But what the calibration cycle is, is it pretty much um, tests the resistance and everything uh, whenever it fills up with water. Because these things fill up automatically nowadays, uh, depending on how, or the weight of the clothes and everything that you put in it. So um, that's why you want to do this, because that calibration's all out of whack, because that hub um, was damaged before. So you got to get this computer um back to its normal operation so whenever you get this hub on you got to do uh, this calibration or it could act a little funky so let's make sure you guys do that um, the rest of this is just me testing everything uh, once I get the hub on I like to fill it up make sure it agitates and then drain it and spin and that's pretty much all these washers do they fill up with water they agitate the washer clothes and then they drain and then they spin so as long as your washer does all those things it should be working for you so I like to do this just to make sure nothing else is a problem because one of the worst things uh, for a service company 
is if you get a call back on it because there's a problem you were uh, unaware of or something. So uh, make sure everything's good to go before you're done. And that's pretty much it. Um, I reckon I'm going to let you guys just watch the rest of this. It's, there's not much to it um, anymore. But <clears throat> if this helps, I mean, give me a like, uh, subscribe, and I truly do appreciate you guys watching. And I really hope this helps. Thanks.